My name's Elisa. If you've never met me, my name's Elisa. We're doing something a little bit differently today. We're talking about entertainment in a different way. This is how to write a book. Beginner friendly. I've always loved writing. I've always loved storytelling and publishing my inner thoughts to the world like this has definitely been a little bit scary. My dog is like choking on water. But you know what? It's not scary anymore. After I got over the fear of it, I'm a lit as fuck. But I want to talk about writing a book for people who are wanting to write a book or for people that write books regularly and are seasoned with it. Let's help each other. Let's get a combo started and going in the comment section because I don't know everything and I would definitely love to know more. I'm going to publish more in the future. I'm in my author era and I'm, I'm here to stay. But I'm making this video because I turned to YouTube a lot when I wanted to know how to market the book and how to publish the book. And there are people out there that do need help with that. So buck a kept gate, I'm busting that bitch open. Step one, what story do you want to tell? Obviously, this is step one because this is pretty important. Is it the most important part? I think what story you want to tell can change through the process but knowing this from the tippity top it's essential is there an experience that you've had in your life that you want to talk about is there a journey that you want to talk about are there like essays that you want to publish or journal entries what is it that you want to say what is it did i say that right what do you want to say <laughs> And again, that's vague. So what I like to do is go into my notes app or my journal. I actually like to handwrite a lot more, but sometimes when I'm on the go, shit be coming to me on the train and stuff. So wherever you are, write down a description for this story, just like three to four sentences. Whenever somebody clicks on this book that doesn't exist yet, what description are they gonna be able to read? Just so you can get an outside glimpse. And this, this right here, what I'm about to say is like 1A because we are going to talk about characters, but this isn't quite about the characters. It is about who is telling the story. And by that, I mean, is this in first person? Is this in second person? Is this in third person limited? Are we looking at the story from the outside in? Are we getting one person's direct view? And how do you want the audience to see this story? Are we observing it as if we're watching a movie or are we observing it? through their, the main character's eyes. Only you know. In my story, if we get through this trip, I wrote it in first person because I wanted people to be able to see the inner battle the main character, Priscilla, was going through because she loved someone a lot, but also she had kind of lost herself. And also, this person that she cared about wanted to go to the next step, but also her inner voice wasn't giving that moving on to the next step even though like she's in a heterosexual relationship as women were kind of told the way things are supposed to play out and things weren't playing out that way for her and that happens to a lot of women i felt like i i could connect with that character and i felt like there were people that could connect with that character which is why i chose first person so we could really be in her head but then also i got feedback of people being like i loved the story but uh, Priscilla was being a little too hard on this part or I love this story but I was rooting for XYZ and it's very cool to see that because selfishly when I was writing the story I wanted everyone to understand from Priscilla's point of view by getting the feedback that people still connected in their own way to the story even though they don't see things through her lens was a gulp of fresh spring water right from the ozark part two characters this is one of my favorite parts of the storytelling process because i feel like the most important thing is connection and i feel like that's kind of the basis of how i see things maybe 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 you can relate don't you have that certain type of friend that you're like, oh, I'm going to tell her this story too because she's going to appreciate it, but you won't tell the other friend. Or like, you'll tell your parents a version of a story because like, they're your parents, but then you tell your other friends the raw version of the story. Because I know when I be 
giving the edited version of things <laughs> this is about to get deeper because maybe that says something about me as a person maybe i really do need to be telling the people that i don't want to tell it to but you know what if we get through this trip was a lot about intuition so i'm gonna stay on track because i am rambling <laughs> so in your story how many main characters are there if it's first person that kind of you know checks off that box but like maybe if it's third person um third person on the present maybe there's three i don't know how many main characters are in this story who is the story about and that's something that would have been able to be answered from the first step i'll timestamp everything if you need to rewind main characters are those with the most amount of influence on your story or your plot now how many secondary characters Secondary characters are still very essential for helping move the story along, but they're not as important as the main character, but they could easily be like the sidekick, the best friend, the villain, the person they're in a relationship with if the story is about a relationship or a friendship. And then tertiary characters. These characters serve a minor role in the story. Maybe they come around once, maybe they come around twice. They add richness to the story. A breakdown in the book that I wrote, If We Get Through This Trip, the main character is Priscilla because this is her story. The secondary characters would be um, Chase, her boyfriend, Mr. Nelson, Chase's dad, and Mrs. Sheila, Chase's mom. And then the tertiary characters would be Jackson, someone that she ran into that she met, and then Francesca, her sister, who is never physically there, but she's always there like over phone call, over text. For me, I like to establish the main character, their strengths, their weaknesses, and then how the secondary characters play into that. What they connect on, what they disconnect on. And then same with the tertiary characters. Usually for me, the tertiary characters kind of only play into their strengths because they added richness to who she was. Step three, the plot. The reason I put characters before the plot is because any story that I write, the characters have the ability to change how the plot comes about. Maybe something they said changes the trajectory of the whole story. Maybe something that they did changes the trajectory of the whole story. So a few weeks ago, I started doing this thing where I don't outline for stories. So what I do is I use that description that we wrote in step one, I make a beginning, a middle, and an end. Usually it's about one sentence, so I can kind of know where we start, know where the peak is, and then know where the story is gonna end. This helps me find stopping points in the story because the beginning, middle, and end helps me stay on track without having an outline that I have to stick so clearly to, but it still gives me the creative freedom in those in-between moments. I feel that's when the magic really happens. Step five, drafts. I'm gonna tell you right now, that first draft is gonna be ass and that's okay. Get through it and allow yourself a few drafts. The second draft is a little less assy, but we've removed some of those grammatical errors. We've added in some of those words that we missed because we were typing so fast because the ideas were just flowing. We removed some of that dialogue that just is yeah, unimportant, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you wanna change the tone a little bit in that third draft. And then some people may have editors, so that will definitely help have a good guide. And one last thing, if you're self-publishing a book, this is your book. This is exactly what you wanna write about. It can be any amount of words. It can be any amount of chapters. My first story, nine chapters, 45 pages. It's a short story. I got everything that I needed to get out there. And I know when I was writing it, I was ready for the story to be over because I did feel like that section of the book of character Priscilla's life was over, even though I don't necessarily feel like that's the end of writing about the character Priscilla. Like there's definitely more to come from that, but I do know that act one of Priscilla's life is done. And act two of Priscilla's life will begin. Like right now, I'm in my author era. I feel like I'm in act two. I feel like a whole book of my life has been closed and I'm starting up a new book. And you don't even have to think about it that deeply. <laughs> but I just say all that to say, there's no set amount of chapters. There's no set amount of pages. There's no set amount of words. Use your intuition to guide you to tell the story and know when it's done. I don't know another way outside of that. And if you do, leave a comment because we would love the help or just let us know your process i'm so intrigued by other writers and other authors and like i'm very new to the author community and i just 
I want to get to know everybody that I can get to know. So maybe you're writing a book. Maybe you're thinking about writing a book. Whatever it is, I'm so excited for you because the journey is amazing and it feels good and I feel accomplished and I feel validated um, just because I did it. Not even because I've been getting really good reviews from like so many awesome people. Thank you so much to everybody who has read and left a review. Like genuinely, it means the world to me. It is feels very naked sharing something like this even though this is a fiction story a lot of it is inspired by real feelings and connections that i've had with people so being vulnerable is cool you guys do it more often take what resonates with you leave what doesn't resonate with you and leave comments about anything in your storytelling process or even if you want to get started leave comments with questions like i'm so down to answer anything i want to help as much as i can and i want to learn as much as i can i'm getting my phd in motherfucking life right now but yeah this is just what worked for me. I hope something connects with you, or if it doesn't, write something that might connect for me. I'm always open. My comments are always open. I thank you so much for watching this video. I love writing. I love storytelling. I've loved it since I was a child, and I'm just so grateful that we have the technology to be able to do that without being behind a kept fucking gate. Anyway. That's all for today. I will see you next Sunday, baby.